When we talk about core internet protocols, we don't just talk about IP. We typically talk about what's referred to as the internet protocol suite, or frequently TCP IP. Because what actually runs on most computers that are connected to the internet is not just the IP protocol. It's the IP protocol combined with the protocol that's called TCP. The history here goes back to Vint Cerf and uh, Robert Kahn's original paper, A Protocol for Packet Network Intercommunication. Because the protocol that they originally designed, that was designed to power the internet, actually included a number of different features. So the pro it says the protocol provides for variation in individual number of packet sizes, transmission failures, that's reliability, sequencing, ordering, flow control, getting different computers to play well with each other and share network resources, um, and, and error checking and the creation and destruction of logical process-to-process -process connections. This is an extra layer of naming. Now, the protocol that they originally designed had all these features in it, but it was eventually separated out into two different pieces. Because if you remember, there are a lot of things that the IP protocol doesn't provide. So the base IP protocol that's run by all the computers on the internet doesn't provide a variety of different things. And the TCP protocol, it's also known as the Transmission Control Protocol, adds these features on top. And these are features that are pretty useful. They're, they're used by a lot of the, the communication on the internet. So what are some of the features that are missing from the base IP protocol? So uh, one of the most important ones is reliability. The IP protocol is best effort. It does not guarantee that packets are going to arrive at their destination. All it says is, I'm going to do my best. If you give me a packet and I know, you know I can figure out how to get it to the destination, I'll try to transmit to the destination. And there's a bunch of reasons that that can fail. The IP protocol doesn't try to handle those failures. Um, and so the TCP protocol will. Another thing that's pretty useful that the TCP protocol provides, and I'm going to try to figure out how to spell, is ordering. So when multiple packets are transmitted from A to B, it would be nice if they arrived, if they, maybe they don't arrive in the same order because the IP protocol doesn't guarantee that they're going to arrive in the same order. It's possible that they take multiple paths across the internet. But the TCP protocol allows me to reassemble them into the correct order. So TCP will put the packets back into the right order even if they arrived in a different order. The third thing that TCP provides is an additional level of naming. And this is something um, that it's impossible to sort of give full justice right here. But the idea is for the internet to support all these different protocols and services, just the notion of a host and uh, two hosts on the internet isn't quite enough. For example, if I'm contacting www, or if I'm contacting cse.buffalo.edu, I might be contacting it to retrieve a web page, but I might also be contacting it to send an email message. And TC, uh, the IP layer doesn't have enough information to distinguish between those two different services, whereas TCP does. The final thing that TCP provides is something called flow control. And this is simply a way for multiple computers that are connected to the internet to use network resources fairly as, they, uh, as they're both trying to use the same network. So if I'm downloading a video and somebody else is downloading a video, um, the network wants to make sure that we both receive some adequate service. I don't want all of the resources given to me and the other person can't download the, the, the video at all. So TCP provides a way for hosts at the end of the network to figure out how much bandwidth they should use and adjust to fluctuations in uh, availability of network resources. So the, the, the core internet protocol speed, TCP IP, just is usually considered to provide these features. However, these features, reliability, ordering, naming, and flow control, are all provided as part of the transmission control protocol, and they're not built into the core internet protocol. And there's a reason for this. The reason is that uh, this allows us to design other protocols on top of IP that might not need these features. So although a lot of internet communication does occur over TCP, there's also another protocol that's considered part of the core protocol suite on the internet called UDP. And UDP, for example, doesn't provide reliability. 
it does, in certain cases, provide ordering uh, and naming. Uh, uh, doesn't do any flow control either. And UDP can be a good fit for certain types of internet traffic that don't need these features. So one of the reasons um, that the core internet protocol suite was refactored in this way from uh, Surf and Cod's original idea was to make sure that people don't need features, uh, don't get features that they don't need. So if I'm uh, uh, connecting over the internet, and for some reason, and there are valid reasons, I don't need reliable data transfer, I don't have to have it. If I want it, I get it by using TCP IP. If I don't want it, I can use UDP on top of IP, and I don't have to have it.